What up, my little cubers? Welcome back to another draft here on Arena. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash Numot for all your magic card needs. Some more of this chromatic cube. We'll jump into our pick one pack one. Lot of good green cards here. You've got the Hoof, the Galta, the Renin 7, the Oracle of Moly Dully. Ah, green. Green things. I guess I'm going to take the hoof. It's one of the better win cons in the cube. Uh, for green, anyways. It, yeah. I mean, the rate at which you win when you cast Crater, uh, Crater Hoof Behemoth has to be very, very high. Though, of course, the, the stats, if there are any for that card, is pro probably a little bit skewed, right? Because presumably the only time you're casting the hoof is when you're winning the game. But I don't mind first picking it here, but I am going to be very quick to abandon it, uh, abandon it if we do not get much in the way of uh, support. We have Anissa here, which is quite good. Cavalier of Thorns is pretty decent. So we keep saying it, but there's not really a good aggro strategy in this format. Not really in any of the colors. I think... If you did have to build an aggro deck, you'd want to go with white, as it does have a decent number of uh, good ones and twos, or at least more than other colors. But for the most part, I think you're supposed to be setting up and ramping into uh, big, bomby cards. So, uh, man, this pack kind of sucks. I guess to follow the hoof, I'll take the Nissa. But again, I'd much rather be taking basically anything else here. I mean, you could probably take a land if we wanted to, but all three of those lands are also pretty weak, so. Ah, another uh, kind of unfortunate pick, but hey, it is what it is. So the real thing you need to pick up if you're going to go green are the mana dorks. So if we don't see mana dorks, um, it will be a good idea to ditch the green. Crucius here is probably a little bit too good to pass up. That and Elishnor and Mother of Machines are, again, two of the better creatures in the cube, period. What else is here? Good old Chromatic Lantern, Bank Buster. Yeah, Crucius, I think, is just a little bit too strong, right? Even with only one toughness, it is way, way too good at not only ramping, fixing, but also turning um, cards maybe that are not good at the moment into cards that are potentially good, right? If you have a land that you don't need, then you pitch it for something that costs more than zero. If you have something super expensive you can't cast, then you can ditch it for something a little bit less expensive. Basically, if you see an alchemy card, you should probably take an alchemy card. That, that is generally the case, even in cube. Right? Grenzo being the worst offender of why is this alchemy cube in the car, or why is this alchemy card in the cube? Okay, yeah, so it looks like green could be dead here. Or at the very least, we're not seeing much green out of the last two packs. I think this is going to be in a braid. Bank Jop is decent too. It's one of those alchemy cards, but I don't know. I haven't particularly cared for this one. Um,. Siphoners, generally pretty nice in the decks I build. Catacomb. Yeah, like a Wrath is fine, but I think I just like the cheap interaction. What's going to be awkward is if we see like a Mana Dork in the same pack as just like a, a good black or red card. Because I, I suppose if I see a Mana Dork now this late in the pack... I mean, I guess it's not that late, but if we see a Mana Dork at this point, then maybe the couple of previous packs just didn't have many good green cards in them, you know? Sometimes that happens. But, nope, I think... All right, I'm going to probably just end up pitching the green now. So, quote-unquote, lose out on our first two pickups, but that's not a bad uh, thing to do if we can find a better lane. Crucius, a Braid, and now a Kolagon's Command. Pretty fantastic. Village the Bog, really good in cube. Vista, great. I mean, a couple of good ramp cards, I guess, if we wanted to take a green card. But I don't really consider this uh, 
on the on this or in the same deck strategy as like the mana dork deck. Uh, there are not too many good cheap burn spells in the format. You do have a couple of things like Lightning Bolt and um, actually no, they don't have Unholy Heat. But you have you have a bunch of two mana uh, burn spells as well. There's an Explore, but I don't think that matters. That's not really a signal as much as a Mana Dork would be. Here I'm looking at either Thundering Falls or Liliana. The Nashi is okay. I mean. It's it's one of those cards, right? If if it hits something amazing, you kind of just win on the spot. Um, but oftentimes it's not going to. Plus, it has to connect in. So I think either Liliana or Thundering Falls are where we want to go. I guess for now I'll just stick to Liliana. Oh, there's a Grave Titan. Okay. That see, this is now a weird point because we're seeing the Incubation Druid's seventh pick, but I don't think we have a reason to take it anymore. Kind of unfortunate. But we could have Explore, we could have Incubation Druid. And who knows, maybe the uh, next pack, pick 8, has something else green that would have been nice, but... It doesn't, and it has a an 8th pick Lutri in pack 1, so we're getting a huge gift. As with all of the cubes, if you see a Lutri, you usually should take Lutri. At the very least, it should not be going pick eight. That is kind of incredible. We just get a free a free eighth card, right? And given the decks that I tend to play, this is usually going to be pretty good because I will have some number of OP instants and sorceries. I mean, even just copying like a Kolagon's command is kind of sick, right? All right, what do we wield? Galta? Nope. Massacre Worm? I'm not huge a fan of that. I don't think the worm is all that good generally in this format. Rotisserie Elemental kind of sucks. I guess the Temple of Triumph? It's just your, your opponents aren't generally making a bunch of small creatures, right? So while in some cubes, Massacre Worm is great, I don't I like it's like mid-tier here. Hell to pay, cataracts, incinerator. Hell to pay is just okay. I suppose it's playable. Um, blech. I guess black market connections for a lot of card advantage. We're just going red black stuff. Not a huge fan of braids. Uh, bank job wield. Okay, maybe. Beginning of your upkeep, exile the bottom creature card of your library. You may cast that card this turn. The beginning of your next end step. If that card is still exiled, put it in your graveyard and create a treasure. Needs a handful of creatures with that, right? And generally, you're going to want cards that have uh, graveyard interaction too. Like we have Kolagon's command that works okay with Bank Job, but I'm feeling that probably not going to be a play here. Calamity could be good. Okay, pack two. What do we have? Cruelty of Gri uh, Gix is great. Roxanne on the Splash, not terrible if we wanted. Pretty happy with the Cruelty. A lot of good value there. Hmm. Red, black, and the Chromatic Cube. Ugh. And this cube has very few discard effects. Um, 
and the discard effects it does have aren't very strong, I guess, right? I mean, for example, the cruelty is a five mana discard effect. Like, there's no thought seize, there's no binding negotiation, so on. Prosper is pretty good. Much better than bank job, I think. Liliana's pretty good. That's some more graveyard shenanigans for uh, bank job, I suppose. Yeah, I guess we take Lily here and then try to wheel Prosper. I mean, Krenko is good. Ravenous Chupacabra is good. Actually, Zia Torres is also great. I mean, we have a lot of picks here. I guess maybe the safest pick is just fixing and then wheel something. Let's actually do that instead. Um, Murderous Rider is okay. Sedgemore Witch is okay. I guess we take the Rider. We don't have any instants and sorceries right now. Calamity with Grave Titan. It's a lot of tokens. Rankle. Oh, Evolve Sleeper. Ah, oh, Ral is so good. I think Ral is one of the better win cons in the format, but we'll stick with the the red black for now, and I'm gonna take the good one drop over Rankle. Lord Skitter's decent. Okay. I I don't like this type of deck in this version of the cube. Um yeah. We'll see how it goes, but I don't know. For some reason I I feel like this doesn't beat a lot of the strategies. Kong, 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 Kong. A pyromancer here for just a decent two drop. Automaton is a lot of good value, but it's slow. Settle for some removal. A Phyomancer is okay. What does a Phyomancer work well with? Not much. I mean, I don't again I don't have that many instances in sorceries. I only have three total right now, but I think I'd prefer to take the two drop here. Oh, not happy, not happy. Actually, somehow I've only taken one land so far, or one on-color land. I guess we haven't seen many red-black lands, have we? Creature count seven. Okay, there's a pretty nice set of picks. Rezug's pretty cool. I think I'd rather just take Lightning Bolt though. <laughs> Raska's pretty good too. I can't really afford to pass Bolt. Oh, that's nice. That's a little bit of a gift. Crackle with Power is an amazing finisher. Like Generally, if you can cast it uh, for two or more, you're winning that game. But sometimes you just cast it for like a Lava Axe, right? Gutter Dweller came back. That's good. So at the beginning of your upkeep, you sacrifice another creature. You do put a 1-1 one, one counter on it and exile. Yeah. Not bad. I mean, this looks good for a red-black deck. I don't know. I'm sure we'll do fine. We have a solid-looking start. We have a full pack three to go.
Uh, still need some more cheap creatures if possible. Like a Magda would be great. Actually, how many good one drops are there in red and black in this format outside of the Evolve Sleeper we have? There might not be that many. All right, we have our choice of Kranko and Lily again. Uh, both are solid. I guess I'd rather take the Planeswalker. Finale of Eternity. Another card I don't think is actually all that good in this format. Silence. <laughs> hey, wield the wrinkle. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm just thinking about what what are we looking for the most? And I guess fixing is the premium pickup right now. Besides any of like the nutty I don't even know if there are, if that's the right word. Good early creatures. Oh, I guess there's a generous plunder we could pick up. It's another good two drop. Um, settle maybe runnable. Exile creature. Exile creature and put two loyalty counters on a planeswalker you control. Actually, that could be really good too. All right, pack three. Give us the goods. We've got a Null Priest of Oblivion, Key to the Archive, Blight Step Pathway, which probably ends up wheeling. Ah, I think Key is just too fun. This is another one of those decks where I don't think it, this is at its best necessarily, but man, is it a fun card. Yeah, let's do it. Key to the archive it up. And then wheel the, the pathway. And if we don't wheel the pathway, then regret sets in, but we'll worry about that. Come pick nine. Your count still a little bit low. Ah, did we pick up any other good creatures for Calamity? Yeah, the Gutter Dweller makes more tokens on ETB. So I guess it's just Grave Titan and Gutter Dweller right now. Actually, maybe this is not good in our deck. We have a lot of legendaries too. It doesn't work with Rankle, Crucius, Skitter. Doesn't really do much with Pyro and Sleeper. Hmm. That is strange, actually, that, that we might be cutting that. All right, we have another red black land in the lounge. This is a Lily of the Veil. We have triple lilies. Blast is whatever. Good splash consideration. I guess at this point we'll take the land. I think the only thing we're looking for now is like a Grenzo <laughs> as far as bombs are concerned or wind cons are concerned, but did not expect to get that. We have a sushi here, Titan. Curtains is actually one of the better cheap creatures. And a drown. Drown with a few creature or uh, with a few planeswalkers for the proliferation, also not bad. I mean if 
If I wanted to cut the Calamity, the Inferno would be a good add. But I think the Curtains is where we want to be here. And we'll probably end up wheeling some of those other cards anyways. Eldest, Reborn, and a Forsaken Crossroads. Reborn's pretty solid, too, I think. It's a little bit slow, but yeah, it's good. And the last mode is always very scary. Terror of the Peaks, Mephit's Enthusiasm. Terror of the Peaks with Calamity, there you go. Build your own OTJ combo. Uh, I think I'm just going to take the Enthusiasm here for some more cheap interaction. We got Lolth, Gearhulk, Leveler, Voldaren. Uh, I don't really want any of these either. I guess if I had to play any of them, it would probably be the Spider Queen. Uh, you reek with <sighs> Exquisite. Okay, Lannery's good. Ooh. I saved you all from a sneeze. Ooh. Oh, I guess I didn't mute. I paused the recording. Either way. Scary. Uh, Broodlord could be good too, but it's kind of expensive. Although we do have some token producers, but I kind of like the Captain Lannery more. <laughs> some more good early pressure. Uh, not going to be playing Fires here. We could play Duplicator without the prototype cost. All right, eighth pick Grenzo. Go. Somehow, some way. Oh wait, that was our last pack. Never mind. Well, we did wheel the pathway, so I can't be upset. Good. Good, good, good. It gives us three red black lands. Although the pathway doesn't add both. It's one or the other. Just one more solid playable. Oh, how did we end up with Lutri uh, for instance and sorcery? Six total? Yeah, pretty mid-tier. I mean, I guess we can play the Blast. I don't really, no, I don't really want to be playing that. Settle is okay. <laughs> Sushi came back. That's probably fine if we want to. 4 4 flyer with some value attached. Jaya, no boots? Probably not. Terror and Kerevec. <clears throat> I mean, I guess I should probably be playing the Terror of the Peaks, huh? What am I cutting, though? Uh, Hedron Archive, I don't think, makes this deck. Actually, I guess Archive is also not bad when we have things like Crackle. All right, no nope, stupid bug again. Excuse me. I guess we can cut the sushi for the terror. Probably is fine. Companion. So one more cut, perhaps. 
Yeah, I just don't like hell to pay. Right, so we get proving ground, lounge, and pathway. All right, well, here we go. I don't know. Again, I, I don't think a deck like this is generally that good in this cube, but maybe we can, maybe we can make uh, my opinion of that change. Uh, good start. We have equal sources of red and black, for the record. Um, I guess I'm going to lose the writer here, as I don't have a second black yet. Abyssinian's Pilgrim. Rule of law is always kill the mana dork when you can. Though now I do wish I had that uh, murderous rider still in my hand. Maybe our opponent didn't do anything, and we can just return Lutri to our hand for our turn three. Naked Garrick. Hmm. That's kind of a problem. Take demonic tutor here. I speak for the wilds. Oh God, we're dead. They have ten, maybe twelve mana next turn. Holy crap! Uh, what can I tutor for? I can double tutor here as well. Bolt can kill the Garrick. Oh, sheesh, this is so bad. I have five mana left over if I don't want to copy the Bolt. I guess I could grab Cruelty of Gix. It might be best to double tutor, though. Yeah, I think I'm going to double tutor here. I want to grab Bolt to just immediately kill Garrick. <sighs> Don't know if we have a good secondary option, honestly. Maybe actually just Crackle in case they play something fat. Buried in the garden or something? Guess they would bury my key. Metamorph. They're going to metamorph my key. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, that ain't great for us. Hopefully they don't find anything good. Discarded a land. Two cards left in their hand. I mean, it could just be like a counter spell. Let's lead on terror.
I wouldn't mind if it was just like approach of the second sun, unless they have a way to churn through quickly. It's like a regrowth and they have nothing good to grab. Ah, they grabbed their own demonic tutor. Well, I have to imagine that's probably, probably going to be it for us. <sighs> 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. They have 13 mana here. So whatever their best card in their deck is. Uh, honestly, if that was it, I mean, I am dead next turn, I guess, but could have been worse. I can't beat a counter if they have it, so. Sublime Epiphany. Alright, that'll do her. Yeah, see, this is what I'm saying about this kind of deck. You would think it looks okay on paper, but I knew. We're just going to get out-bombed, out-valued in uh, some of the matches, so. Hopefully we can avoid decks that uh, that do over-the-top powerful things and we play against some more mid-rangey or other similar decks. I think it's actively bad if there's not a good aggro strategy in the format. This is a good hand for our deck. Black, white, and blue. Issue here, I don't have anything to do on turn two. Like, land pass is so bad. We really needed to win the die roll here, too, if we were going to have nothing to do. Because then they would have spent their turn two playing the tap land, and then we would have resolved one of our good three drops, you know? Alright, so we'll bolt that and then just go for Lannery and start getting extra treasure value. Ooh, that'll unlock Terror of the Peaks next turn. That's good. Chart a course. I'm fine with that. All right. Huh? We could just go for Grave Titan here. Uh, that is about as good as we could hope for. Or I could go for Greed and go for Terror into Grave Titan. I guess let's do that. I potentially missed a damage by not playing the terror before attacking. But if nothing goes wrong here, <laughs> they take 10 from Grave Titan entering the battlefield. Alright, cast out. That's honestly fine though. That deals with the terror, but I still have the Lannery smacking in, you know? Pre-combat this now to hit in for three. Again, that's only going to deal with the Grave Titan and not all the other uh, issues they have. So let's go... Mephits carry over...
I think I'm actually supposed to go for black market connections here. Because Crucius could just die to a wrath or whatever, right? But the black market connections is going to keep getting us value. Yep, there they are, the flicker. So they can get back their blade splicer, which is pretty good. Ah, that's really good too. Does that win? It's very close. I can put them to two. Oh, wait, Lily Cat costs eight this turn. Never mind, I can't kill him. Disregard that. Um, I have seven mana, eight with the Lannery. They're going to block with Baron. And we need to kill the Emil. So let them go to draw. Let them trigger the Elspeth Conquer's death. Now my Murderous Rider will only cost three. Shoot the Emil before they get their Blade Splicer. Great. Okay, so they get a bunch of... Oh, they only get one clue when he enters. Why did I think this card made more than one clue? Vona! Okay, so they get to kill something here, and then... Oh, well, they don't have an extra card in their hand. Okay, um... I pay five? I think I have enough action. I think we're just going to make a three-two. Alquist is going to wreck us. They can do one, two, three. So they can draw five, gain five with the Alquist, and I don't have a way to get around that. I guess I'm going to go with Pyro into Lily. Make both players sack two creatures. Oh, I do love a good death whale. Pass. Okay, Colgon's command's really good. Just gonna al al uh, activate Alquist. Remember, I have to keep activating that every turn, so... Okay, so they're going to draw five, gain five. It's 
So let's go like this in response. Discard. Destroy. Actually, I have creatures I can get back from my graveyard, can't I? No, let's go discard, destroy. And then we can Eldest Reborn away the Croft. So second chapter is only going to make them discard a card, which isn't super relevant here. Their own Liliana. Uh, is that even good? My army will envelop I guess it is, but I get two more loyalty on mine. Oh no, not more loyalty. I get to draw cards, right. Oh, okay, well. That'll be that then. Snap, crackle, pop. Oof. They almost stabilized there. That was terrifying. This deck is just not good enough. This strategy, rather, is just not good enough. The deck is good for what it is, but... <laughs> ah. Alright, good looking hand here. On the play with a turn two creature. Amazing. Hey, nice. We can blow that up and make them discard a card and get a token. I have to kill the land. It's just too good. As good as it would be to resolve a turn three black market connections when we're on the play like this. Find a stone into a two drop? Sure. Versus green. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll take the Day of Judgment, and if they kill my key to the archive, so be it. Yeah, good thing I took the Day of Judgment. Archive into Wrath. Nice. So they're going to hit me for seven here. But this is going to be a pretty good stabilize on our part, right? As long as they can't hit me for, like, another hasty 7 damage. Oh, Xenagos is scary. Yikes. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 mana, though. Alright. They're just dead next turn if they can't kill me. They need a fat trampler. Off the top. Alright, and that should be GG. There's not much they can do with four mana at this point, maybe five. 
because we can just steal their Kogla and Yadaro now. Give it haste. Or Vorinclex would have worked too, I guess. Phew! Okay. Taking that day of judgment was clutch. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. On the, I mean, on the fun side of things, every win is going to be a, a struggle for the most part, so... If we do win, they will be, uh, they will be good. Alright, on the draw, which means we're already really far behind, but we just need one land here. Good. Ideally, we can find a second black source, but Lannery can give us treasure, of course. Great. Great. So if we're playing against another blue-white uh, flicker deck, that's probably okay. Because the flicker deck can get a lot of value, but they're creature-oriented. Sure, it's fine. Just a target for removals. Ooh, excellent. So we can kill both their creatures, get our Lannery back. It's not too shabbies. I don't think I'm supposed to play the Pyro out. Because if they deal with Lannery and I don't draw land, then I'm not going to be able to cast one of my five drops. Alright, so they are going to bounce Lannery and get their own copy, huh? Ah, really needed to hit a land drop there. I guess what I can do is Captain Lannery attack and murderous ride. Four blocks. Hit him for four. in their hand. <sighs> Wheat guard mage, yep, sure. Planeswalker online. The Lily and a Crucius. We can cruelty their duplicator to just immediately put it onto the battlefield if we want to, which isn't a terrible line of play. Uh, I guess they eat the Liliana with that. That's fine. The others can deal with you.
What's your plan here, friend? I'm just gonna pass turn, huh? Oh, I'm just gonna run out the cruelty then. Do have a counter. All right, that's not too bad to get rid of it. On the bright side, they weren't able to like ca copy it and uh, or spree it more and copy their guard mage or whatever. Once again, though, I feel very far behind. If they can find any way to, especially a continuous way to. Blink their guard mage. That's going to put us out of range for sure. Yeah, I hope they don't have like a restoration angel or something because I think we go with the rankle now. You have Epiphany? I can't beat Epiphany either. Oh my god, so disgusting. Well, that'll be that then. GG's. I, there's no way we can come back from that. <laughs> oh, come on, Red Black. It's like that meme. Do something. We are just getting absolutely... Blech. Wrecked by the more powerful cards. On the draw, no! Ugh. Our deck needs to be on the play so badly. Island? We're dead. Or rather, blue source? We're dead. Okay, I have a way to kill the Mana Dork, that's good. Maybe if we can keep them in check, get a little bit lucky. Captain Lannery, if I play it out next turn, will be a 5-2 haste. Dragon's Horde. It is so tempting to, again, just Kolagons command that immediately, but... Getting in for a free hit and getting that treasure, I think, is a little bit too good. We might get punished. We're giving them access to potentially five mana here. It is a lot of colors and an Ashiok, sure. Well, bouncing the Captain Lannery doesn't do anything, so they're going to make a 2-3. Which, sadly, Kolagon's command does not kill. I could attack, trade, and play Liliana. Doesn't seem too bad. Two lands gone, that's not bad either. Let us march into battle and make new the problem with this play is that they can just Ashiok bounce, but then we've put Ashiok down to a lower total. Oh, that's perfect. That's not perfect. They hit one land on top and a hostage taker. Oh, they didn't make a... Uh... Okay, that's good. Well, I can make both players just... Sack two creatures now. Oh! 
Oh, that's perfect. Each player sacks two creatures, and then I get to Eldest Reborn away the Ashiok. My lordy lordy, that was good. Luck be a lady tonight. Damn. Perfects. Alright, they draw their hostage taker. They get to Grotto Scry. They insta topped. They like it. They do have to discard a card here with Eldest Reborn next turn, so. Oh, that's a good one. They messed up though, they should have played out there. Taker, of course. Rise and shine. Um God, I needed a land. Let's just resolve the key. Because what I can do is I can Colagons them on their draw step and make them discard whatever card they get. Perfect. So we have a free turn here. That should be GG's. Actually, Ashiok or Lannery is much faster of a clock. This looks like a fun new toy. Crucius, stop on their draw step. Pass turn. Discard grave. Uh, discard murderous rider, I guess. Discard two damage. Or discard return the murderous rider, I guess, is better. Nice. Nice! Hit their elite guard mage, which would have drawn another card and gained them three life. Perfect. Oof! Three wins! Three wins! Go, red, black, go! Can we get to four? On the play! Hand is garbage! I can't keep a hand like this. That's much better. Uh, I'm gonna pitch the key here. I might actually just resolve the black market connections on turn three instead of plannery, but we'll see. I guess it depends on what they do. Old steel heart. Alright, fine, I'll just go with Lannery. Lannery still lets me cast the uh, Eldest Reborn next turn, just like the Black Market Connections would have. Swarm Saboteur, sure. This is good. Pressure continues. Oh, they have the pock. All right, good news is I get to kill the pock with Crackle. And then um, steal it with the Elders Reborn next turn. No whammies, please. They have access to six mana this turn. Polychronos is pretty large. Bramble familiar. Okay. 
you got in there, friend? Let's take a peek see. Nice hit. It's huge. The demonic tutor next turn with cruelty? Yeah, feeling great. Ah, Garrick was a good draw for them, I suppose. Watch out. These woods. Well, actually, was it? I don't know. It was fine, but we're still winning pretty easily, it looks like. I have no it's four mana? Three. They can activate the punch here. Oh, I should have ordered those triggers the other way around, so I would have known what we want to grab. Uh, how do I win? Murderous Rider's probably good. Two, four, six. Yeah, Murderous Rider probably wins. Using a lot of life here, though. So they can punch one of my creatures in response, but that's not a huge deal. Well, I guess technically I should have gone to attacks first with Captain Lannery. Make a treasure in case they punch Lannery instead of the 3-2. Yeah, small mistake. I've got better friends in the wild, anyway. Polychronos needs six other cards in their graveyard, so even if they chump with the Bramble Familiar here, they won't be able to uh, bring back Polychronos unless they draw something. Bronze Walrus. Don't think that's going to cut it for them. Just dead here, right? Eve so. Punch, punch. Nice. Okay, we are scrapping something together. Four wins now. I believe. Put me on the play. Step one, good. Ah, that's a mulligan, though. We have finally our one drop, but... Both of our tap lands and way too much top end. Okay, that is a respectable looking six. Probably going to prioritize Crucius on three over curtain animation or whatever.
pre or primeval titan rather in the graveyard that could be good for us if we find one of our reanimate effects turn to iron crag crucius into discard land Everybody has a Pock, dang it. Oh, but they didn't have a land to play first, so... Or rather, we, they didn't have to... They played a land, then played the Pock, so thankfully we're going to get to kill that. I'm going to go ahead and Curtains here and attack for six. Nissa, I guess? Yeah, Nissa got to be the pick here. They can cast her next turn. Nice, that's really, really good. Celestis was the draw. Arada, okay. So they can actually rift me next turn? Possibly. So yeah, we're just going to attack with all then. We'll trade Rada for Crucius, it would be my guess. Discard Gear Hulk. Oh no, they're... Okay, so they need to hit a land here. Otherwise they can't kick the... Or rather, overload the, the Rift. Uh, I mean, I'm going to decline, and I hope they don't hit something crazy. All right, we only took three, and they are not dead on board. They're at one on board. Yeah, so we just make them discard and sack. They have to hit a land for Rift, so... And even if they hit a land, that's the only play they get to make. Nice. Okay. Woo, woo, woo! The pressure is doing some work somehow, some way. We're at five and wins. Five, five and wins? Five and two. Ah, a couple more. Every win is a blessing at this point, trust me. On the draw, the hand's bad. No! <laughs> Got a mulligan this. It's just way too slow. There we go, that'll do. Let's pitch the tap land, we actually have our turn. Oh, I should have kept the tap land, that was a mistake. Right? Yeah. I should have pitched uh, like a mountain here because I could have played the tap land and still animate or activated the sleeper on turn two. Cease. Okay. Opponent's on a slower start. We can get the early pressure and then just get like a crackle for 10. That's probably going to be good enough. So we need to get to 8 mana. We can discard a land here to ramp, but it's going to enter tapped this turn. That's fine. 
Nice. Oh yeah, so we get to apply the pressure. I'm gonna block Lannery most likely. Sleeper I can pump to a three if they block. Yeah, there they go. Uh, we don't want to discard. Let's just draw a card and lose life here. So Esper Blink is what they're looking like to be. Alright, Vona, gonna kill my Rankle. Sure. And then they can make a copy of Rankle if they want to. And they don't. Uh, that is one off of winning. I mean, I could just go Crucius, discard Liliana. But that is risky if they have counter magic. I guess I just Liliana here minus. I'm now a, another mana away, but we wipe their board and we have an active planeswalker, so. I don't know if that was right, but it feels good. It feels like it's far safer than uh, Crucius Pass. That, pff, that's great. If that's their play, then. They're just trying to set up for next turn, and that should be a win. So we discard Pyro and grab Lesser. Perfect. There it is. That's presumably a win here, and we can even bolt a creature that has three or less toughness. If they're going to try to get flicker value. Mind that. And we don't mind that. Very good. Uh, them doing that's not even good. They give me a 3-3 and they don't get to eat anything. Get to play for a freaking trophy with this deck. If you told me it, I wouldn't believe it, but we did have to get some fortunate uh, draws. Okay, six and two. Feeling alive. Let's see, are we gonna play against an opposing Lutri? Are we gonna be playing against just like red, blue, good stuff? Ah, I don't think I can mulligan this hand because I'm on the play with a Lannery on three, but this this is a little bit top-end heavy. This is not a confident keep. This is a reluctant hope I draw something to do on turn two keep. Hello, friend. Welcome to the club. Just kill the Pyromancer. If you're going to do anything, just kill the pyro. Or like pillage the bog for two. Oh, is this maybe the uh, minus two, minus two? Look, up, look at my hand. Yeah, brutality. So they get to hit my enthusiasm, but... 
Now Lannery gets to bash in and gives us access to Eldis Reborn next turn if we want to, or attack and Grave Titan. I feel like attack Grave Titan's probably a little bit better here. Turn 4 Grave Titan in my red black deck. You love to see it. Hawk is insane, but that doesn't stop me. Jeez, and we drew Crackle. <laughs> Alright. Oh, we got a very good draw there. Jeez, I... I think we have to consider ourselves very, very lucky because, yeah, I mean, you saw the games we lost, especially our opponents were just doing bigger, heavier things. Um, hey, again, these decks, it's not that they can't win, it's that I think overall they are worse than a lot of the other strategies, so we'll take it. I mean, I wouldn't call this aggro, this is more mid rangey for sure, um, but phew, we'll take the win. See, thanks for watching, we'll see you back next time. Bye-bye.